Hello, everybody. Welcome back to game-based learning in the world language classroom. The why, what, and how. We are still talking about the why. Once again, I'm Madame Sensei. I teach Spanish, French, and Japanese to high schoolers out here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. If you want to discuss this with me, because I love honing my ideas and tweaking my ideas and bouncing ideas off of people, find me at studio-nemo.com or ping me on the Minecraft Education Ambassadors or the Minecraft Teachers Lounge or on the Duolingo Educators Network. And this is my first book right here, which was just an overview of all the language teaching pedagogies that there are. And now I'm working on, this is my fifth book or so, um, game-based learning. So we're still talking about why game-based learning is crucial in the world language classroom, okay? So I've taken a lot of classes with this wonderful lady, Tammy Schrader and Al Gonzalez. And this is Tammy's um, TED Talk, and I'll put the link in the description. But Tammy's very fond of saying, you don't get to pick what motivates kids. Um, she's not really into all the games that the students like, but she's savvy enough to know that in order to connect with her students, she needs to at least give them space to play these games, okay? I'm lucky that I started out life as a nerd, so I'm already passingly familiar with most of the games that the students like, or at least the concept of the games. Now, sports, I don't really get too much, but like Tammy, I'm willing to learn to understand if it will make me more effective as a teacher, okay? And I can't tell you how much fun I had when I had my teachers, my teachers, my students teach me how to play cricket a couple years ago. That was absolutely amazing. And uh, that was so much fun in class. So I work on building relevance into every lesson. Games are very relevant to the students, right? They want to win. They especially want to beat their friends. They're even going to police their friends because they want to win and they're going to hold their friends feet to the fire. So they will not let their friends talk in English during the game because they want to beat them. And they know that talking in English is going to like drag their friends down. So it, it's just wonderful. It makes your job as a teacher much easier. I feel very strongly that I shouldn't teach in a bubble. Okay, we do math in my class because, hey, if the students can add in Japanese, then I know that they're pretty close to being fluent, you know? Um, if the students understand the history of the French Revolution, we can draw on that for why language is built the way it is and why the politeness in the French language is the way it is. And, you know, I mean, I don't teach in a bubble. I bring in everything I can. Um, so I take a lot of different t classes myself so that I can be more well-rounded. And I do have a CTE certification. That's the Career and Technical Education certification. And wow, I the game-based learning fits so well in that philosophy. Okay. And it, it's the 21st century skills that your students need. I'm going to show you how game-based learning fits exactly in this CTE model. So these are the main 21st century skills that your students are need, they're going to need, and they're going to be honing while you play games. Self-management. The student is learning to negotiate meaning. They're planning their moves. They're strategizing. They're also learning to be a good winner and a good loser. They're also thinking about how to study so they can win the game. Self-management. Cooperation. I think this kind of goes without saying. Obviously, in a game, you'll need to be able to negotiate with those at the table. Do you agree with the rules of the game? Are you sharing the materials? Even in the most competitive of games, both sides have to cooperate as they jockey for position. Relationships to peers. I'm not just talking about teammates within a game. I'm talking about that just playing a game is going to give everyone happy hearts in their eyes in general. A lot of times it gives people an excuse to interact with other people who might not otherwise be searching out things that they have in common. Are you having difficulty post pandemic because your school district said, Hey, you have to integrate social emotional learning 
into your curriculum. We got that down, Pat. Okay, here's your answer. Uh, it's easy to document for your yearly evaluations, and you don't have to like artificially put social emotional learning into your class. Relationships with adults. Well, on a personal level, hopefully they see my class as a not stressful place. And that can be extrapolated to other classes. I don't want to be their friend, but I do want them to be able to carry on a polite conversation with me. But also, confidence in speaking during a game is going to translate quite easily to speaking in the greater world. Perseverance. Students want to complete the game. They're driven to complete the game. And they can see their improvement every time they play which translates into motiva motivation, wanting to practice. They want to improve when they play the game. They're focused on mastering the skills that are gonna lead them to success in the game. Maybe they didn't win this time, but by golly, they sure wanna win next time. That's perseverance. And grit. Students have a long-term goal of getting good enough to win the game, or at least do well enough on it, right? The game keeps their interests over the long haul. It may take a while, but students can easily visualize what success will look like. That keeps them engaged through repeated plays. That's grit. Creativity. There's a lot of thinking outside the box. Students are going to try to game the system. Okay, that's just part of playing a game. They're going to jockey for position. Moreover, as students get into the game, they're going to start tweaking the rules, maybe even inventing a whole nother game for the class. This is one we can change on the fly. Critical thinking. Oh my gosh, this is so crucial. If I do this, then this will happen. Students have to predict. They have to evaluate their position and their opponent's position. They have to analyze movements. They apply skills. They synthesize skills. They're going to observe the game. They're going to communicate before, during, and after the game. They experience the game, and they finally reflect on the game. These are all solid critical thinking skills. In our next episode, we're going to talk specifically about universal design for learning. So easy to do with a game. Hope to see you there.